Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Wedge and this is the TCG community video for the second half of my M15 booster box opening. Now, we opened the first half on my channel, The Mana Source, which you should check out in the description below, but the second half is going to be on the TCG community because this is a great channel and we should open awesome stuff. So we're going to get right into it. I'm not even going to tell you what we opened in the first half in case you didn't see it, but you should go back and see it because it's totally worth it. Yes, it is, even if it's just for my absolutely awful commentary. So we're going to get right into it, see what we got. And Crust is great, Nimbus is great. Ornithopter makes me smile on my face. I just want to say that. Staff of the Flame Magus, Paragon of Open Graves, Quickling, nice, another Quickling. And a Polymorphous Jest is our first rare. It's a great way to start. Three men until end of turn, everything becomes frogs. It's like Mass Ribbit, which I am totally okay with because that makes me really happy since... Turn to Frog is hilarious. <laughs> That's a good way to start. A good way to start. What do you guys think about M15, though, really? Like, the set, the design, everything. Because I think it's awesome. They hyped it up so much, and they did a really good job, because I was pumped about it. Trip the Conspirates, Void Snare, both great. Plummet Awesome, Sideboard Tech. Chester's awesome. Ooh, and commons, we have Dark Steel Citadel. Staple in Affinity Decks. Paragon of Open Graves, again. Paragon of New Dawns. And an Obelisk of Erd. For all you awesome tribal players, it's the six mana convoke as in his battlefield, choose a creature type and creatures that you control of the chosen type get plus two plus two. Wonderful for tribal decks, especially in a in a format like Commander. You can expect to see these everywhere. Everyone's always looking for anthem effects like this. Um, it'll definitely be a stable. Plus it has convoke. That's pretty awesome. Honestly. Uh, it lets you play it way sooner than you would be able to normally, which makes your little small dudes way bigger. Way, way bigger. So I like that. I like that a lot. Obelisk of Earth is very cool. Very cool card. Let's get you guys right up there. Let's see. Coral Barrier, just fine. Creates another creature. That's exactly what we want. Resco Swift Claws, pretty good. Pretty good and limited. Wow, we've gotten a Paragon in every pack so far. Paragon of Fierce Defiance, Heat Ray. Wow, the red. Endless Obedience and Avacyn, Guardian Angel. Oh, Foil Plains. How you doing? You come here often? Yeah. What's up? You want to talk? I'll take you out. I'll buy you a nice dinner. Anyway, <laughs> Avacyn, Guardian Angels, 5 mana for a 5-4 Flying Vigilance, and it's amazing in Commander. 2 mana prevents all damage that would be dealt to another target creature this turn by sources of the color of your choice, or you can prevent all damage that would be dealt to target player this turn by sources of the color of your choice. Yes, that's expensive, but the ability is great. Like, the fact that it's color-based is really good in Commander, instead of being something more specific. Um, colors help you out a lot, and Avacyn, while being 5 mana in Commander, let's be completely honest, that's not that bad. <laughs> you, should be able to, you should be able to get that, you know what I mean? This is a lot better than people think. I'm not sure what its price is now, but it's probably too low for what it should be, to be honest. It is a Legendary Creature Angel. If you get some foil ones, that's going to be worth some serious point. It's an Avacyn. People love Avacyn. Inferno Fist, great for limited. Great for limited, absolutely. Carrion Crow, also great. Elvish Mystic, staple. Crippling Butt Sides, okay, on commons we have Tormod's Crypt, Into the Void, amazing for limited. Feral Incarnation, and an Avarice Amulet. Avarice Amulet, most people consider to be absolutely terrible, but that's only because when it dies, target opponent gains control of it. <laughs> Although, in a one-on-one, -on -one, that's obviously annoying, but if you're in Commander, you could make alliances with people and be extremely political with Avarice Amulet. Or put it in a Zedru deck, where you actually want to give your opponent things. Um, I think this card has its uses. People rag on it way too much. I think it's perfectly fine um, in a format like Commander and multiplayer formats. It's super political. I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. Because it's a super game keep. Yeah, 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 target opponent. Yep, this card's awesome. I think it's very cool. We're all up on this wall of fire plan today. Oh, Vaporkin, cool. Black Cat, meow. It's <laughs> my description, Black Cat. <laughs> the commons, we have Constricting Sliver, easily the best sliver for limited in, except Venom Sliver is close, but I think Constricting Sliver's ability is way, is better. Staff of the Sun Magus, Sacred Armory, and Aether Spouts, yeah. What's up, my new sweep spell? If they don't print a 4 mana Wrath and Cons, you're our prim premier removal spell. 5 mana instant for each attacking creature its owner puts it on the top or bottom of his or library. 
I think this card is great. Yes, it's five mana, not four, but one, it's instant speed. Two, it's mono blue, which should make it easier to cast, at least for me. And three, it gets around indestructible, one, which is wonderful, and auto kills tokens, which is also wonderful. So I think Aether Spouts is seriously undervalued. Um, it'll definitely be worth a whole lot if Cons comes out and doesn't bring with it a blue white wrath. Aether Spouts is where you're going to be looking for your premier removal. So I would keep that in mind. Aether Spouts is pretty great. Aether Spouts is pretty, pretty great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've only pulled white, blue, and artifacts. I'm totally okay with that. This is this is how I want my whole life to be. This is wonderful. Lightning Strike, great. Griffin's Eye, Rhino's okay, which is familiar staple. Look at that guy. He's huge. Maggot's really good. It's definitely undervalued. Venom Sliver, talk about the other sliver that was really good and limited. It'll be, uh, it would be our Death Touch buddy. Nightfire Giant, amazing if you're in red and blue. That red ability is degenerative as heck. Uh, Zaphyr Slyblade, also I think undervalued and limited. And a Mass Calcify. So this is the seven mana Sorcery Speed Wrath that just basically kills everything that isn't you or a white, or another white player. Or another player playing white, that sounded awful. <laughs> Destroy target all non-white creatures. Um, it's expensive, that's true. But, it'll still see play in Commander because it's a mass removal spell. And that's kind of what they value. So, I could definitely see Mass Calcify seeing play there. Um, for sure. Obviously not what I want, I don't think, in my, um, blue-white control deck. But, you know, who knows? Who knows? We are playing, we are in a world where planar cleansing is amazing. Who knows? V Vaporkin. Nice, nice, nice. I like that. Mm hmm, mm hmm. And Crest, still good. Goblin Rough Rider. It's alright. 3 2 is okay. And Commons, you have Military Intelligence, Boon Weaver Giant, Congregate, and Genesis Hydra. Staple in Mono Green Devotion right now. X Double Green zero, 0. You basically use Genesis Wave something out. You Genesis Wave one thing out based on whatever the X value is. And it enters with that many one encounters on it. It's just good. Most Hydra's weakness is that when it comes into play, it has no immediate effect. Sure, it comes in gigantic, but they could either unsummon it or kill it. With Genesis Hydra, it's, a, its value already happens. So even when they kill it, it doesn't matter, because it's when you cast it. It's genius. This is a really good way to make Hydra's relevant. It's very clever. A really good card. Definitely going to see play for a long time. It's just, it's just designed... It's just designed extremely well. You know what I mean? It's just designed extremely, extremely well. Definitely a good card. Alright, let's move right along. Peel from Reality, still amazing. Obviously. But whenever I say something's amazing, I'm talking about limited, unless I specifically say otherwise. Fetch lands, nice. Elvish Mystic, good in everything. Maggots, good in everything. Uncommons, Blood Host, good and limited. Into the Void, great and limited. Congregate, and limited. Waste not, hey! Hey, this card is actually worth a decent amount of money. Because whenever opponent discards cards, it does stuff. You get a creature, if they discard a creature, you get mana if they discard land, and you draw a card if they do neither of those. <laughs> it's, you know what it is? It's because it's so outwardly powerful that when your opponent discards, you just gain so much value that it has value. Because people realize that the card's good, one, and two, it's designed by the Magic community, so it's obviously, you know, close to a lot of people's hearts. This is gonna be, if you can get Waste Knots, you probably should, or Foil Waste Knots, because they're, they're gonna be collector's cards. Like, people are gonna want these, you know what I mean? They're gonna want these because it's history. It's Magic community history. It says it on the card. Also, I think it's really good in casual games and Commander. Anything multiplayer is good. And I would love to see, like, a modern deck with it. Oh, that would make me the happiest person on the planet. I know people are trying, and believe me, I'm the first. I'm behind you 100%. Siege Worm, good. Good. Fetch Land, still good. Living Totem, good and limited. Dawnless River Marshal, if you're in blue, this card is bonkers. Shrapnel Blast, also good. Ancient Silverback, Wow. This, okay, for being a green uncommon, this is better than most of the rares in the set for limited. It is, and it used to be a rare, so I think it should still be a rare. Six, five, one green to regenerate. I mean, this thing is disgusting. If it hits the board, if you can't exile it, this dude's never leaving, and he'll just take something with him every turn. It's disgusting. Soul of Ravnica, oh, that's beautiful. 
Foil Life's Legacy. That's our second foil rare in this box. So we got our Soul of Ravnica, which is six mana for a flyer. You can pay seven mana and draw a card for each color among permanents you control, or you can exile them from your graveyard and draw a, color, uh, draw a card for each color among permanents you control. This is like my favorite art for any of the souls. I think it's beautiful. The card's okay. It'll be fine in Commander. It is a six mana 6-6 six, six flyer. Great and limited, because all souls are great and limited, because of their 6-6 six, six flyers for six. Um, I actually love this card. I love this card a lot, but you want a staple. Jeez. I mean, maybe not for standard right now, but... A Foil Life's Legacy, this has serious value. It's because the ability to be able to sack a creature and draw cards equal to the power has been around for a while. And it is quite strong and still used today. Amazing card. Great card. Wow. And we were talking about it earlier, on, or in the, last, uh, in the first half of the box. This is amazing. Very cool. Very cool. Wow, yeah, that's, that's value right there. Jeez. Foil Life's Legacy. Man. That is great. <laughs> that is just that is just wonderful. And that card's gonna be good. That's gonna see eternal play. Guaranteed. Coral Barrier for a little squid tokens. Shadow Cloak Vampire, great and limited. Yep, yep, yep. Sanctified Charge can be good. Will Forge Golem is just fine. Borderland Minotaur is great. Aresco Swiftclaw is great. Meteorite is awesome. Seraph for the Mass is a little too expensive. Sacred Armory is like eh. But Siege Dragon, the red intro rare is gross and limited. <laughs> it's gross everywhere. Um, it is seven mana, but it's a five five flyer. You destroy all walls and you deal two damage to each creature without flying that another player controls. So it doesn't even have, it's not everything. You get to target. Wonderful and limited, easily first pick. You'd be hard pressed to find another card better than this to first pick. It's very good, very good. Super strong. Super strong. Oh geez. I'm taking my little packs with me. My goodness. All right, here we go. Oh man, have we got an appeal from reality in like every single pack? That's great. I'll take all of them. Are you joking? A little lackluster on the commons this time around, but we have a Venom Sliver and a Paragon of Open Graves. Oh, and we have a Profane Memento. And oh, that is. Oh, that is. Let's just take that in together. Let's just. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, how are you doing? That is just, you really, mm. <sighs> you just, you know, when things work out, they just work out. <laughs> oh, you're beautiful. You're even prettier in person. The pictures don't do justice. Oh my God. Oh, you're gorgeous. Oh man, that is, that is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big fan. Big fan of the Nissa, as you should be. Nimbus is great and limited, so is Nissa. Crippling Bite, so is Nissa. Alvi or, uh, Fetch Lines are great. Living Totem, so is Nissa. Dauntless is good. Restock is good. Wow. This is a lot of amazing cards. And another Siege Dragon. Oh, sweet. We got the Garrick Emblem. Nice. Very cool. All right, we got our second Siege Dragon. We pretty much all know what this does, you know, we just we just pulled one. So our look at that, our Nissa's gonna are gonna snuggle with a pair of dragons. And that's how awesome she is. Yes, sir. Oh wow. Freaking freaking Nissa, right? Gosh darn it. Another appeal from reality. I guess that's like luck for us. Shaman of Spring is great. Blast Fire Bolt's alright. In commons we have Feast of the Fallen. Feast on the Fallen. Caustic Tar, which is a wind condition and limited. It's hilarious. You could play this and win stuff. Wall of Frost and a Yisan. Yeah. Yisan the Wanderer Bard is the three mana birthing pod. <laughs> three mana, two, three legendary creature birthing pod that everyone's going to play in Commander for the rest of eternity and attempt to play in Standard. I know there's a lot of people doing it right now. The card's wonderful. Um, for three mana tapping, you put a verse counter on him, then search the library for a creature card with converted mana costs equal to the number of verse counters to put onto the battlefield. So basically, every turn, you can pay three mana and kind of go up a chain of mana, go up a chain on your creatures, um, bring something out as long as it stays alive. And that's really the only downside, is that you have to keep that dude alive. Because it's a huge mana investment, but the ability is extremely powerful. You're talking about a selective tutor effect that's kind of letting you decide what you get, which is great. Squids! It's very good. Just like in a vacuum. Very good. All right, in commons, we have Staff the Wild Magus. 
Caustic Tar, Illusory Angel, and Obnix. And a foil first response. Oh, you're pretty. Obnix the Unshack or Ob Obnixless Unshackled, six mana four for a flying trample. Whenever opponent you cracks their fetch land, they sack a creature and lose ten life. See, this is Guys, they're gonna be fetch lands and kinds of tar here because of this ability. Oh. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Obnix is pretty cool. Obviously a limited bomb. You should get him for commander because he kind of just hoses everything. You know what I mean? He just kills it. Like everyone wants to search. The whole format is based on tutor effects. You know what I mean? It's absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Alright, let's uh let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Gross. This is not appealing to reality. I feel ripped off. Child of the Night, fine. Generator Servant, great. Great. Uncommon, we have Gargoyle Sentinel, Shrapnel Blast, another Ancient Silverback, and a Necromancer Stockpile with a Foil Swamp this time. That's cool. I like Foil Lands. Alright, so our Necromancer Stockpile is two mana for an enchantment. You can pay two mana to discard a creature card to draw a card. And if the discarded card was a zombie, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token on the battlefield tapped. People are trying to make modern zombie decks with this, thanks to cards like Gravecrawler that come back on their own. Um, I would like it to work. I don't know if it can, but I would like it to, because I think it's a really cool card, and the concept is cool, and I would really like that. And we got our foil swamp, so... Yay! Guys, three packs. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? The foil black lotus? I'm joking. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> it's like living the dream. <laughs> Right, Shaman of Spring, Shadow Cloak Vampire, both great. In commons, we have Wall of Mulch, Love the Walls, Jeru, Jorubai, Merc Lurker, Geist of the Murs, Great and Limited, and Crucible of Fire, because dragons in Tarkir. Dragons in Tarkir. Seriously, though, dragons in Tarkir. Obviously, obviously, why would they print this if there were no dragons in Tarkir? What, is this soul? In the whole block, is the sole reason for this to mix with Siege Dragon? No. Or Broodkeeper tokens? No. No. Dragons and Tark here. I hope they're the Elder Dragons. I'm not going to lie to you. That is that is a pipe dream, but not really, because it's totally going to happen. Third set, Dragons of Tark here. Calling it. We're going to have so many dragons that the world's going to go nuts. Okay, I'm pretty sure we've gotten a Sun Grace Pegasus in the last, like, ten packs. About. Shadow Cloak, still great. Flash to Dust, still great. Chester's awesome. Kurt Chieftain, first response. Kurt Chieftain's great. Rogue's Gloves, and Hornet Queen, another staple in Mono Green Devotion. Four colorless, three green for a 2 2 flying death touch. When I was the battlefield, you get four 1 1 flying death touch insect tokens. This card is like so much, val so much value. Yes, it's seven mana for a 2 2. But you're getting six points of power. So seven mana for a six six fire, pretty good. Pretty good on a non-mythic card. One. Two, death touch on everything. You want to talk about profitable trades? If they don't board sweep, they'll never attack you, they'll never attack into you again unless they give everything first strike. And let's be honest, in standard right now, first strike, not that prominent. Yes, some creatures have it, but not a lot of them. And Death Touch reigns supreme right now. Hornet Queen staple. That goes with our Genesis Hydra and Nyssa. Guys, we're like building Mono Green Devotion right now. We're building Mono Green Devotion. All we need is a foil Nyssa out of this pack, and then boom, we did it. And deck's over. <laughs> Print. Another Sun Grace Pegasus. You're like chasing me, bro. Flush of Dust, great. Great, wonderful. Neckaster Spider, amazing. Maggot's good. Alright, here we go. Oh, last pack. Staff of the Flame Magus. Grave Digger, awesome. Battle Mastery, Haunted Plate Mail. Four mana, quick creatures plus four plus four. You can pay zero and make him a four four spirit artifact creature that isn't equipment as long as you control no other creatures. I've seen people use this to great effectiveness in limited. So if you get this, you can pick it up. Just realize that you need a synergy or you need a deck that isn't based around it, but synergizes well with what it's trying to do. So keep that in mind. It could be good value in limited. Um, just don't get trapped by it. Just don't get trapped by it. All right, so let's go over all of the amazingness that we have accumulated, shall we? Shall we? Yes. Mm. So we have our Haunted Plate Mail, a Foil Swamp, Necromancer Stockpile, Obnixilis Unshackled, a Foil First Response, Mass Calcify, Aether Spouts, Avarice Amulet, Avacyn Guardian Angel, Foil Plains, Obelisk of Erd, Polymorphous Jest, our Hornet Queen from Mono Green Devotion, Crucible of Fire, Yisan the Wanderer Bard, Siege Dragon, our Nyssa 
for Mono Green Devotion, another Siege Dragon, Foil Life's Legacy for Sideboard Tech, Soul of Ravnica, Waste Knot, and a Genesis Hydra. Our green was extremely strong here. Like, look at these cards. And then if we want to go value-wise, like if we're looking for stuff that people actually want and play, gotta go with the Foil Lands, man. We got Avacyn, Aether Spouts, Obnix, Swamp. Look at all this. This was great. This was half a box worth of stuff. That was wonderful. Remember, if you want to see the first half of this and you didn't, it is on the Mana Sources channel. Remember to subscribe to the TCG community because we love you and we release videos all the time. If you like these booster box openings, the style, let me know. We might do more of them. Awesome. Thank you for being here. And this is the bomb. How you doing, girl? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, talk to you guys later. Thanks for subscribing. See ya.